So we have xi and yi in simple linear regression. Typically, um, xi is called, don't need statistical uh, knowledge, just an algebra. What do we call the axis? What type of variable? <laughs> independent variable. So same thing. This is the independent uh, the variable. I'll call it independent. And naturally, y is dependent. Algebra, Lego, statistics, we use the word predictor. And why as the response predictor response. So if you look in literature, people would simply say we have predictor variables, multiple sports variables. They're not going to say independent, dependent. So those two different in literature. Um, there is a reason why we call it a predictor. Um, one of the important requirements for XI and YI. Yes, you have to fill in the dot. Let's see if you remember what type of dot on x i y r. So the nature of data is a part sample and my non parametric statistical method students know that this would result in dependence. We were cheated in that class maybe. I took it with Pat Oh, you did? Yeah. So Pat sample, dependence. Um, so XI, YI. Great. What type of relationship would it have? Or should it have? If I want to use simple linear regression methodology to describe the relationship between xi and yi, or x and y generally, what should the relationship look like if you would get a graph? It should correlate. Okay, it must correlate through in what manner correlation could be. Each dot is an observation. Yes, Eric, would you say that there is correlation? Yes. Yes. There, the data is random, but certainly X and Y are related. Yes. Is it a direct relationship? This is also a direct relationship. But what do you mean by direct? Do you know? So, I guess in the movie, it has correlated to a certain degree. If one goes up, if one goes up. Right, so that's what we mean by a direct relationship. If one um, if x increases, y also increases, then direct. If x increases and y decreases, that is inverse. Um, so to counter to that point, Would you consider that to be direct relationship? 
x is increasing, y is increasing. Yes? There is correlation in both cases. Now, if I want to, can I use linear regression for that? There's better, or just like you could, but it's not the best model for that. I could. Yeah, there's if better. I models. could, how would I do it? Did you just say we use the linear reg? <laughs> yes, um, but for this sample, without the calculator, yeah. how would you model this concept? Then reg is for linear regression. Right. Like, so that looks more like a quartic polynomial. Something like that. Um, using all the response of words. It is a polynomial with degree four. Polynomial with degree four. Um, so if you look at that relationship, underlying relationship, that's what it's like. Right? There is correlation, um, but that's a polynomial. That's likely to be exponential. exponential, right? My question to you is, can I use some linear regression methodology to this for that? It says no. Why? It is not linear. So the requirement is There must be a linear correlation. I can take Linreg and apply to any data set that I want, xi, yi. But is it the right thing to do? No. Um, that's why I often tell people, well, students in 2023, it's not about simply using a formula in statistics. If you end up doing research or in pharmaceuticals, insurance, one of those, you can't say, oh, I fit a linear regression model for this data and I'm going to make predictions with that. Good luck. Right? It's not meaningful. You have to understand the purpose rather than simply using the formula. So the data has to represent a linear relationship. Um, it could either be direct or inverse, in, increasing or decreasing. Um, you may say, well, how do I know if there is a linear relationship? simply use a scatter plot. Do we know what the scatter plot is? TI 84 can do a scatter plot. I'll show you using um, R, the calculator, to get to it. Have we cleared? Yes. So that picture, not going to work. Ah, not going to work. Um, That will work, I guess, in the of And I drew that orange curve there and there. I, do, I did it in a very characteristic way. 
uh, and I drew it, I took into account for something from autism. I'm not sure if you see it. Uh, that orange line behaves successfully, but it's not a best fit. It's the line of best fit. So not, well, that's not the line of the cat. But, yeah. but it's best fit. Eric is using tons of words. Uh, um, does it go through the center of the garden? More or less? Center of all the observations? Yes, not just one of them. All observations. If you look at this, it's sort of addition to the garden, right? It goes through the center. Same here. If I drew a line in this case of this doctor, how many lines could I draw to represent this doctor? Just one. January says just one. How many lines can I draw through those points? I'm slowly getting, I'm approaching. Eric's point in limits. Bad joke. Nerdy joke. No one got me. Um, how many lines can I draw? Infinitely many lines. So I can draw. The line of that sort, yes. I can draw a line of that sort. I can keep on drawing as many lines as I want, but all, all the lines, only one line is going to describe the data or the relationship in the best possible way. And that line is a line that will go through the center. That. Um, and that is why we call that line the line of best fit. Of all possible lines, that line is the best line which will explain the relationship between um, X and Y. Now, is it going to do a great job in explaining? Every single observation that you collected in the data, no. Um, let's not pause it. Here's their variation. Um, so now, do we understand as to why we call this the line of best fit? Yes. So in this case, perhaps the line of best fit uh, is that. Um, so our goal. Find that line of best fit. Now, when we use Linreg to find the line of best fit, am I getting an estimate of the line or am I getting a theoretical line? Yes. Huh? Yes. The estimate. Why is that, Jerry? Because uh, it's from a data scan. It's from a sample. I have a pad sample. If I came up with this line of best fit, it is actually an estimate. 